the great eastern cutlery cap lifter, or the beer scout, or crown puller, or whatever it's called, is nearly impossible to get. I mean, I got the 85 pattern in natural cherry bone on the recent run, but not until after I wrote that first sentence. Now, if you make a single mistake in the checkout process, open the door for you lady, or linger too long on the shipping choice, it's already gone. Do I want overnight? Hmm. The odds are always stacked against me because I wasn't even on a secret dealer list or wearing my lucky wool fedora, which my wife bought, you know, to match my vest. But the review isn't about that, because getting that was still over a month off when I shot this video, so the 85 was the past's future, but not this future. You know, it's not really the present, if that makes sense. But in the meantime, how about Mr. Knife now? There's nothing wrong with settling, even when it comes to very important life events like buying another pocket knife, which is why I signed up for a pre-order of the, hmm, sure why not, Lion Steel Cap Lifter. An exclusive to CollectorsKnives.com. Personally, I spend a lot of money, at least for me, at Collectors Knives, and Mike from The Collectors Knives loaned me a prototype knowing if he gave me a little taste, I would probably wind up buying the whole rock. I'm kind of excited because I don't get, you know, many early looks. That's not that kind of channel. I'm not really a Nick Shabazz, okay? Do they not trust me? Is it the hair? The knife is similar to the CK-01, and a ways back you may remember I reviewed the CK-01 clip point variant called the Shuffler. That's a lion steel knife. There's also a Barlow blade variation of the CK-01 called the uh, Roundhead, and this sort of shares the blade from that. The cap lifter is like a slightly thicker, nearly identical version of the Roundhead, except with a bottle opener that has a flathead screwdriver tip. Is it a multi-tool? Huh. Discuss while we do some dimensions, or just think about it to yourself. Remember that this knife is only going to be slightly heavier and thicker than the standard collector's knives Lion Steel Barlow. It's like a quarantine round head. <laughs> Sorry. Or like me at a desk job for the past six years. Otherwise, it's the same. Gotta give it another back spring and make room for that second tool. So if you know about the Lion Steel CK-01 and its variations, mostly because I just told you about them, it's a modernized traditional style knife. You have multiple blade choices, scale options, and a modern stainless steel in the way of the Bowler M390. Now I don't mind carbon steels, but some people want something that they don't have to be as careful around their moisture, their sweat, or their fluids with. As a slimy wet person, I get it. Anyway, the cap lifter Barlow seen here continues the tradition of the classy roundhead Barlow but equips it for drinking. Hey, you're safe here on this channel though. You can always enjoy a soda. The blade is made from the Bowler M390, which is a modern super steel. I think I've said that like six times. That resists rust, corrosion, and low price points. Now unlike a GEC, whom's sharpness scale ranges from the butter knife to, wow, you know, this one, it's kind of sharp. The line steel comes properly sharpened, and as always, the odds of stitches will increase with the caps lifted. These aren't large knives, so they are acceptable in nearly any social situations, even if talking about your pocket knives to people who don't give two shits is not. Since it has a thinly ground blade stock, I find my original Lion Steel Shuffler isn't any harder to sharpen than my GECs, in fact, easier than some, on my Spyderco Sharpmaker when maintaining its edge. In the years I've owned it, the blade doesn't chip or roll unusually. The bottle opener part does its job, and it's constructed out of the M392. Now, I had never done a comparison between bottle openers before this, but, you know, Mike asked me my opinion, so it's his fault. My Subaru video was evidence that your time means nothing to me here. First, you have the Leatherman Wave, the bottle opener and can opener on the same tool. I found you have to open it all the way for the bottle opener part to get a good grip. It's doing two things at once since it's the bottle and can opener. And you have to be the most precise out of all of the bottle openers here to open the beer in an emergency. Then there's the Victorinox Cadet. Much like you, makes easy work of the soda. Similar here to uh, the GEC. The beer and sausage tool has a wider mouth like the Victorinox Cadet on the opener, which means you have to be slightly less precise with the placement. The line steel is about middle and requires slightly more deliberate placement of the lifter than you would with the GEC on the cap. You know, people like these videos because they're very technical. There's also the flathead section here in case you encounter a screw made before the 1990s or a light switch. A good time to diagnose an electrical problem is when you've been drinking. Did you turn that breaker off? I don't know, probably. Plus that box is all the way across the house. The cap lifter is a slip joint, meaning the blade doesn't lock as most pocket knives 
didn't before the 1980s. As you know, the walk is the opening and the closing characteristic of the blade, and the talk is how it snaps closed. The walk and the talk is kind of a subjective um, rating or you know thing from user to user. I found it still annoying to say out loud though. Pull on these is nice and crisp, not weak. My GEC 23s and the Boker Slack are fingernail rippers. I, I f They kind of feel dangerous when you're opening them. But this is only moderately strong, like a 6 on the scale of 10, and it snaps closed nicely. There is a half stop, meaning the blade has a halfway stop between open and close, usually at 90 degrees. And for my opinion, the walk and the talk on these is a good reference knife for me, meaning it's good and I like the amount of tension, the half stop, and the snap. It's not a weak back spring like the Benchmade proper. Collector's Knives has a few handle variations available. Now I've never had a ram's horn scaled knife. So I got in on the pre-order for that because I figured it would give me a chance to say horny at least once in the video. Not sure if I like it or not, but now I'll know. But the one seen in this video, the walnut, appears to be discontinued before it even comes out because of the lack of interest. I know how it feels. And it's a shame because there's a nice grain, and I get my grain appreciation from my grandfather. He built shelves. He just built shelves in his retirement. Not a good story. The knife has a basic construction of titanium liners and titanium bolsters with screwed on scales. Handle isn't too large, it's neutral and classic looking. Like, you know, kinda looks like a Barlow, right? It disappears inside my fist. It's kinda small, but you know, sitting in your easy chair, catching up on the forum posts, checking the bird feeder. Look to your right to see that. Make sure there's no squirrels in there. The occasion calls for a cute little knife to admire and talk about in your hand. Comparisons first, the cap lifter. Like the standard Barlow, but for drinking. Same basic footprint of the standard CK01 and the back spring tension on both is very similar of the between the two knives. If you drink beer out of the can, like God in the aluminum industry lobby intended, opt for the standard. Or get both like a normal person. Like the place's namesake from where I purchased the shuffler. Collector's knives, I collect, so I naturally want both. Maybe had the technology been available at the time and the cap lifter came out first, I would have gotten in on that. How about the GEC beer and sausage tool, based on the 35 pattern from the Great Eastern Cutlery? Sure, I already have multi-tools, but not one with the comb. I look like a guy who combs things regularly, right? Be nice, I'm feeling pretty today. So that, and uh, it's future scarcity in mind, I got the beer and sausage tools, so it's one more thing for the kids to sort out when I die. The springs on the comb and the fork opener, bottle opener, are weaker, and like a good GEC, you bring the sharpening. It's a processed meat and alcohol lifestyle knife, so since I already have high blood pressure, it was like they made the knife just for me. Now the Glittery 15. Nice back spring, kind of in the territory of the Lion Steels, but a little, just a tiny amount easier, you know, pull. Both Barlows here, both similar size. This one has uh, the Glittery technology. Of course, the Lion Steel, as always, is sharper. I like both, though, and, you know, the thing is I kind of like all, all the knives here. Oh, how about a knife I'm going to review but have been too lazy to at this point? The Viper Swayback. It's also a nice one, similar back spring. Literally have to look up every time for the subtle difference between a Warren Cliff and a Sheep's Foot. Pretty sure it's a Warren Cliff, guys. Don't know. That's what the comments are for. You know, I guess I like the reply guys telling me. Like the difference between a Spyderco exclusive and a Sprint Run. Always love to be told on that one. I know uh, some uh, nitpick knife bros, some friends of mine, think that Vipers and Lion Steel's uh, quality control kind of sucks. I've had good luck with Lion Steel, and the few Vipers I've owned are, have been pretty good. I don't know, the traditionals here seems fine. Fit and finish and attention to detail and cleaning it up are better than a Great Eastern Cutlery. I hate to say that, but you know it does look a little more machine-made, though, so there's that. Probably have a few more CNC machines in the Viper shop than uh, the GEC shop. Are we done? I don't know, I hope so, but uh, there's got to be something else I have to say, right? The Barlow cap lifter is pretty good. I love the little visual details like the classy swedge up top, the rounded long poles, the tension of the back springs, the scale choices. Line Steel makes a good traditional but updated with uh, the modern trimmings. GECs generally use polished bolsters and carbon steels, so they get a nice set of scratches on the bolsters and the staining of the steel parts as you use them. That's kind of their charm. They'll get uglier as they age just like you know, we do. The line steels with their corrosion resistant parts will stay cleaner longer. And again, they have little cleaner machined lines than, say, the GECs. 
if that's your thing. The point is I like knives and I collect them and I'm always ready to add something to my collection that I like the looks of that resembles these other things I already own. And it's stupid and I can't switch it off at this point. However, if you don't own a single traditional and also like cracking a cold one open with the Gramps, the Lion Steel is a good place to start in your journey. And they may not even know it's not an old one because of their eyesight. Just don't bring up the M390. Anyway, you can pre-order these things like I did at Collector's Knives. That way you can get the handle option you want. These are only available there too. And Collector's Knives is also one of the few places to get a GECs for a pre-order. But uh, since I'm a sucky influencer and I don't have a lot of pull, um, I have to try for them just like everyone else does. Only sometimes I'm fast enough. Maybe one out of every six times have I ever gotten in on a pre-order there. And today is April 22nd. Lynn Willen. I got this video done in time. Um, you know, I'm recording this uh, on Monday. Today would be a good day to donate to a veteran's charity or to help out if you have the time for Americans in need. Below the video is a link to the VA's website where you can find a list of places to donate to. If you like the video, subscribe. Say hi to the patrons. They're saying hi back. Like the video. Comment. And uh, as always, thanks for watching.